Okay. Hey guys, what is going on and welcome back to the Fortnum Trading Podcast, episode number 11. I certainly hope you're enjoying the podcast. Uh, recently, the last couple of episodes have been some of my favorite ones to record. So yeah, I certainly hope you're enjoying those. Also, if you haven't listened, excuse me, episode uh, episode one and two of the Live Strong series, the brand new Live Strong series that is going out every Thursday uh, for four episodes is currently live so episodes ones and two one and two are live on itunes for you to watch those are audio only so if you do want to listen to those go and check them out on itunes they are a full and unequivocal sort of behind the scenes behind the program everything that you get on the brand new live strong program that is launching on uh, monday 23rd of July sign up opens Monday 23rd of July then closes a week later with training to start on Monday August 6th only eight spots available there is only eight spots available on that remote coaching program Uh, only eight spots because I wanted to be able to work with those eight clients as closely as I possibly can so not to spread myself too thinly so yeah if you do want to hear a little bit more about that program do head over and listen to the Live Strong series, which is on the podcast. So yeah, episode 11, starting things off. This episode is fueled by the guys from Super 7 Coffee. Sent me some of uh, their coffee, drinking it right now. We've got an Attack of the Day, which is a sort of pre-workout blend. And then we've got a pretty strong uh, 7 Crema blend as well. Go and check them out, super7.coffee. That is their website, and I think they are Super 7 Coffee over on Instagram. So please do go and check them out. A big, big thank you for sending some of their coffee my way. They've got some big, big plans. I uh, spoke to the owners this week, and they're planning some really cool stuff uh, over the coming months, and they've got a very good long-term plan. So yeah, super, super interesting. Do go check them out if you get an opportunity. The coffee is very, very nice. So, a little bit of a different one today. We have got uh, pure, purely questions, purely answering questions in the first half. Uh, I've got two two pretty like solid in-stone questions uh, that I'm going to answer. Then uh, I'm going to sort of branch the second question onto something a little bit different, uh, which ties in with the answer to that second question. And then after the break, I'm going to talk a little bit about some audiobooks and sort of what I've been listening to recently, uh, why I've been listening to it and what I've taken away. So yeah, first question. A couple of questions I've had uh, through on Instagram to myself personally. First question is, how do I manage my schedule and what does my, uh, what does my routine look like on, on a daily basis? And the sort of straight up answer for this is generally most days uh, l- tend to look quite similar. There's a lot of similar stuff that I do on a daily basis, uh, like editing video content, uh, editing editing pod- editing audio content, editing any type of content, whether it is for the Fortnum training stuff, which I'm doing a lot, lot more of, uh, and there will be a lot more coming to the Fortnum training YouTube channel and on the Instagram uh, over sort of at the moment right now. And over the coming weeks and months, putting a lot of work into that sort of stuff. Then, like editing workout foot, excuse me, editing workout footage for my own Instagram uh, and th- those kinds of things. Then, uh, pretty much good couple of times a week, I'll be doing sort of client feedback, uh, replying to sort of all clients in terms of messages that happens on a daily basis. Then we've got sort of replying to and giving feedback on lifts because all that video analysis stuff, got a lot of videos coming in from clients uh, getting their training done. So a lot of video analysis stuff on there, spending some time looking through the videos, picking up sort of little fixes that we can make, little tweaks, and then, and then looking at that and then going away and recording some videos uh, to f- explain what we want with each client individually. So that's just something that I really do a lot of is uh, when we do the video analysis of any lifts, like for example, if it's a clean and if we've not sort of, if you can see from the video that perhaps the uh, bottom portion, hips are shooting and they're sort of getting from that position, hips are shooting and then coming up. So what we do, what I would do then is shoot like a, 
quick video, just grab, grab the camera, set the camera up, shoot a quick video, demo what I'm seeing and fully explain sort of why we want to change that, why we want to perhaps adjust the starting position, maybe bring the hips a little bit lower, maybe take the hips a little bit higher, push that floor away, keep the back angle the same because it's not going to then shoot the bar out in front as they uh, hit it with the hips. So yeah, that's just an example, just an example of sort of the, what I do in terms of the feedback we give the clients in the video analysis so yeah that's every couple of days uh pretty much pretty much monday wednesday friday i will do um i will do client feedback just because other just because not doing every day like sometimes if i pick a time during the day perhaps the client hasn't quite uploaded the stuff as yet so yeah we go monday wednesday friday and then obviously sundays we do the full check-ins uh via message whether it's email whether it's whatsapp uh we do the full check-ins on sundays then Social media scheduling, that's another one that takes up like sort of a lot of the day. Um, social media scheduling, uh, scheduling in advance as far as I can, which is something I really like to do because it really helps me set out that plan for the types of content that we've got coming over the like the next weeks, the next months, like any, if we've got any set dates uh, like in mind, like we've got the the 23rd, which is the, uh, the opening uh, sign up opens for the Live Strong program. I will set some time and in advance, like well in advance, maybe even a month, like we've got it scheduled already. All the posts that are going out on that day, uh, full posts, Instagram stories, Facebook, uh, Instagram, all all of that stuff, all is scheduled in advance and ready to go already. So like all the posts are just all done in advance. So when I get to that day, I'm not rushing around trying to do all that stuff. I can deal with anything else like that we've got going on. So all that stuff, all scheduled in, in advance. Generally, our social media is run probably about a week, maybe in advance, maybe a little bit longer for like special dates. But yeah, generally probably about 10 days, maybe up to 14 days in advance, which is pretty cool. I really do enjoy doing that. It's really good fun setting all that stuff out. And then something that is pretty much every day, coaching. Uh, do a lot of one-on-one -on -one stuff, which is really good fun. We do a lot. Of, I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one in the garage gym. Uh, we're in the kitchen today. We're we're still inside. The weather's been pretty nice, but uh, just it's pretty easy to set up in the kitchen. So it's throw it all up, and then we can get right onto recording. So yeah, we're set up in the kitchen for the for the benefit of those of you that are just listening. Yeah, that's pretty much like the 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 sort of stuff that I do, like the general stuff that I do every day. So yeah, but but every day can look different in terms of sort of the way the day is set up. So obviously, have uh, Monday, uh, Tuesday, th Tuesday, Thursday, and Fridays. I've got pretty early starts, like 5.30. Start for coaching at 6 o'clock, 6 a.m. So get coaching, come back. I will have then have breakfast. Then get into sort of the first couple of things of the day. So I have a, I have a to-do list. I have a list, like my, I've got a diary, which is pretty much every day, full list of things that I need to do on that day. And for me, something that I've really got better at over the over the past sort of couple of months is when I, I have my breakfast, I've coached in the morning, come back, had breakfast, sit down for the first stuff to do, and I will get the easy stuff, get the really simple stuff that'll take me a couple of minutes to do and just tick off those first few things because then that really gets me, gets the ball rolling for the day in terms of getting stuff done and getting everything done. So that's a really good tip that I would probably uh, try and implement is if you do struggle to like sort of really get things going is just to take it when you look at that to do list, pick something that you're going to do straight away, pick something that you're going to do, pick the first couple of things that you're going to do in sort of a couple of minutes, maybe inside 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then just tick off, tick off, tick off, tick off those first couple of things and then get into the stuff that is going to take you a little bit more time because that gets you into the, gets the ball rolling with getting things moving, getting things done in the day. So yeah, that's something that I've uh, really got really got better at and something that I've found that really helps me really get more done and really get stuff done. So that's that's a big, uh, big old tip that I would give. But yeah, so then after that, got the first couple of things done up to lunchtime, which I'll generally have uh, between, I'll take like maybe second breakfast, sort of snack, probably around like 9.30, 10, lunch between sort of 11.30, 12.30, 1 o'clock, somewhere around there. Then generally my training time, unless I'm out of the office and I'm not here, 
uh, my training time is generally between two and five. So it changes it changes daily. Uh, I tend to like to get it done, like start at two, and then I will run through. Uh, I will have up until about four o'clock, where that window there, where I can get my training in. But sometimes, obviously, it runs on, and I will run on to about uh, where I've got some longer like sort of stuff to do stuff that needs to be done on that day so I'll have to push training back a little bit to sort of like 3.30 maybe 4 o'clock start and then I'll finish by about 5.30 before any coaching uh, in the evening so yeah that's generally my training time uh, for me training varies in terms of length more recently it's been sort of 90 minutes maybe maybe 90 minutes maybe hour and 40 in terms of length uh, but some days it can be down to like 45 minutes where I go and just get it done, 45 minutes, uh, and that's it. 45 minutes, high-intensity stuff, got it done, and then I can get on with the day sort of thing. So, yeah, so then after I've trained, sort of somewhere between 2 and 5, uh, food again, I'll eat again before I get into any coaching for the evening. Generally, my evening coaching starts like 6, 6 p.m. pretty much every day, 6 p.m., 6 or 7, 7 till 8. Uh, maybe even 8 till 9 if we've got a third client in for the evening. Yeah, so that's sort of where my schedule runs for each day at the moment, which I am certainly enjoying. Uh, I enjoy the early starts. Uh, for me, I think they're f I think it's great. Like It's not something that I've done a whole lot of in the past. I haven't really had to. But uh, more recently, last couple of months, those 5.30 starts, I genuinely do enjoy, enjoy getting up, going to coach, and really having an impact on people's lives and I, I big respect for people that can get up and train at that time because uh, I am not the best trainer in the morning but I'm pretty enthusiastic to coach so yeah a big big fan of, uh, of anyone that can get up and train in the morning um, yeah so I think like I mentioned about that sort of tip in terms of like setting out a couple of things and ticking off the really easy things early on in the morning set you up for the day sort of like a building habits type thing uh, and that's something that I've sort of got into is really employing the employing the process of building habits and building good habits that set you up for the day that are just generally good for you and things that you should be doing every single day you know, like brushing their teeth like by now I hope well I certainly hope everyone just does that automatically it makes it super super easy just get up straight away brush your teeth surely everyone by now should do that but yeah that's what I mean by building good habits and that's what I talk about when I say anything about building a good habit and the reason habits are good uh, if they are good ones obviously biting your nails bad one don't do it do it it's just because it it's something that you do automatically and you don't have to think about. And I think the best way for something to become a good habit is obviously just think about it and just do it. Like for the first day, just fucking go and do it. Like if you want to make something a habit, you actively will have to do it every single day to begin with for it to then become a habit and for you to then make it that you do not have to think about it. So yeah, it's just like nutrition. Like, if you do want to eat better, just start. The best way to do it is just start. You will get used to eating better. You will get used to eating fresh meat, veg, nuts, seeds, carbs, good carbs. You get used to eating all of that stuff super, super quickly if you just start. And it's the same for training. Like, if you want to make training a habit and you want to make training something that you automatically do every single day, just start and just make yourself do it. Teach yourself to love it. Make it a habit. It's the same thing. Uh, I saw a post somewhere on Instagram this week where it said, um, tr "Make it, make yourself enjoy training and make yourself enjoy eating good food and eating well and eating clean." Uh, and they kind of likened it to drinking alcohol, drinking alcohol, drinking beer. Everyone, the first time you try alcohol, you don't like it. It's never nice, like beer, lager, that stuff is always horrible the first time you try it but you force yourself to like it and you keep drinking it until you do like it and you can kind of do the same thing with training and you can do the same thing with nutrition just keep doing it keep going until you do enjoy it until you do like it and that is going to set you up very very well 
for uh, enjoying training and enjoying eating well for the long term. And it just sets you up generally for living a healthier, living fitter, stronger, healthier lifestyle and just being better overall. So the second question is, I think I covered that first one pretty uh, extensively and branched off a little bit. Second question is my shoulder warm-up. What does my sh- specific shoulder warm-up look like and why? So for me, uh, I don't necessarily have a specific shoulder warm-up uh, for me personally because I tend to like to include a lot of variance in the warm-up and um, doing specific, doing anything specific to one body part can uh, sort of leave out any others. But yeah, you could, if I was to put together like generally what my shoulder warm-ups do look like, various movements as varied as possible so I'm not doing the same ones every single time. Uh, a lot of scapular control stuff so whether it is sort of T's where you're sort of hinged over pulling yourself into a T position trying to turn those upper traps off as much as possible and use those lower traps use the rhomboids really trying to control the scapula those kinds of things um, the push up plus where you get that push up and then extend the scapulas uh, a little bit further that's quite a good one as well uh, any scapular control stuff like that is, uh, for me, is very, very, uh, very, very important because it builds that stability, uh, control of the scapula first, and then the stability of the scapula to help support the shoulder because that's where your shoulders get the stability to be able to move, to be able to control those heavy weights from. Anything with that underhand grip, so things like um, like a band pull apart, but doing it with an underhand grip is something I'm a big, big fan of. Because we spend so much time with a pronated grip like a pull up or if you're using a barbell, anything we generally do with a barbell is always overhand pronated grip. So spinning the hands around, going with the sort of palms up, supinated grip uh, on a band pull apart sets those shoulders in the sort of in that externally rotated position already and then allows you to sort of keep them in that position automatically while you do those band pull aparts and we're really trying to act again trying to activate uh, activate the lower traps activate activate the lower mid traps to sort of bring the scapula together bring the shoulder blades together and control the movement from there basically anything that um, lower mid trap work because we do a lot of uh, lot of lifting a lot of a lot of Olympic lifting we get a lot of shrugging so a lot of upper trap work sort of keep those shoulders from becoming rounded and elevating the elevating the scapulas by the upper traps being too tight spend a lot of time tra- working on the lower traps and looking on the mid traps to keep those scapulas keep the keep the scapulas sort of pinned back against the back of your rib cage and to keep them moving nicely and as they should be and the final one is sort of uh, something else I'd put into the sort of warm-up is anything that takes the shoulder through a full range, um, whether it is in the range that you are going to be working in, if it's like just a strict press range, so just use a dumbbell or a kettlebell, very, very light, and just taking it through that, or like a Cuban press where you would sort of, for the benefit of the listeners, you would row, uh, sort of upright row the dumbbell, rotate the uh, rotate the shoulder outwards, and then just press it straight up overhead anything like that that takes the shoulder through a similar or a bigger range than what you're going to be working in is a really really good one for taking the shoulder through uh, a couple of different ranges and in different positions turkish get-ups are a really really good one they're also a pretty good full body warm-up as well because you've got to do a lot of movement but yeah turkish get-ups uh take the shoulder through a lot of ranges so you can imagine you're all in that in those different positions uh it really does take the shoulder through a bunch of uh, a bunch of different different ranges that you would perhaps not necessarily be in with any pressing but uh, a really good way to help warm up the shoulders and stability because you've got to keep that uh, keep the dumbbell overhead kettlebell overhead whatever you use really good way to build stability and build control in various positions with the shoulder which I think is hugely hugely important as a lot of carryover to anything else functional that we do whether it is uh, whether it is strict pressing whether it's push jerking just having that shoulder stability and the confidence to really push those big weights overhead and keep them up there uh, is is of massive uh, massive benefit so I'm actually going to take a quick break there uh, I will come back in the second part uh, and talk a little bit about uh, programming 
I talk a little bit about programming because it leads on from this bit with the warm up uh, about not letting my own programming biases uh, affect how I program for clients or for classes or for anything like that. So that's something I want to talk about. And then I'll finish off talking about some new audiobooks that I am listening to, why I'm listening to them, and what I have uh, taken away. So we have built the Live Strong program. It is a template training program that is designed around longevity, making you the most functional version of yourself and becoming fitter, stronger and healthier along the way, as well as individualized nutrition to meet you where you are at and help you get the absolute utmost from your programming. Okay, we are back. Welcome back. Episode number 11, part two. Quick little break there. In this part, I'm going to kick things off talking a little bit about uh, programming biases. Uh, we'll kick straight into it and then we'll get into a little bit on uh, my latest audiobook listens. So yeah, something that I've been uh, leading on from the bit we finished off on just before the break about shoulder warm-ups, sort of taking it forward from there. Uh, and I want to talk a little bit about not letting my own programming biases uh, affect how I program for clients and, and those kinds of things. I think that's a huge, uh, a very important aspect of when you program for others and when you program for clients, whether you're programming for competition, whether you're programming for health and fitness, whether you're programming for uh, GPP, health and fitness, same thing. It is very, very important not to let your own preferences and let your own uh, sort of your own personal, personally preferred movements or uh, around what equipment you have specifically, particularly that particularly applies for me because of uh, like living in the garage gym, training in the garage gym. I don't have everything. Uh, I definitely don't have all equipment. I don't I like a general pretty much things. Only more recently I've started to have a pull-up bar. Uh, I haven't got a ski erg. I know obviously not uh, as important as perhaps a rower or as important as barbells and dumbbells are. But yeah, I haven't got, uh, I haven't got, I only recently had a pull-up bar, ski, I haven't got a ski erg, I haven't got a GHD machine, um, things like that. So I've made sure that more recently I've been much better at making sure that even though I don't have those uh, types of equipment, the one I do program for, for clients or for classes and then when I do test those workouts is that I make the best swap that I can. So making the best swap as I can. So like perhaps switching the ski erg to uh, to an assault bike or to a rower. I know it doesn't quite give the same stimulus because obviously the ski erg all arms, but making the best swaps that I can in order to test those workouts for the intended stimulus of them. I think that's something that I've become a lot, lot better at and not just programming exactly with the equipment that I've got so that then my own biases show up in other people's uh, programming and then their training and their progress. So that's something I've got a whole lot, whole, whole lot better at in the last couple of months is not just programming the things that I like doing myself or not just programming the things that uh, I don't, not, or avoiding the things that I don't like doing and things like that. What I found to be really good is it's forced me to do things, do movements that I don't necessarily like doing, but that's not necessarily been a problem for me. I think I've been really good at being able to objectively look at perhaps the movements that I don't like or perhaps my weaknesses and going, do you know what, I, really, I do need to practice them because they are a weakness. The only way they're going to get better is if I do practice them. So I do force myself to do things that I don't necessarily like doing, like thrusters. You know, they're never particularly enjoyable to do, but I will make myself do them. I do program them in my own training. Uh, like now with the pull-up bar, I'm much more easily able to do things like toes to the bar, knees to elbow, hanging raises, all of those kinds of things. So that for me in my own training has opened up a lot for uh, what um, for what I can do personally, but then it's also opened up a lot of things that I can now test that I wouldn't have been able to before test for clients ahead of programming for them. So I can test for the intended stimulus to see if it works, see if it needs to change in and all those kinds of things. So I think that a big, big, um, a big, big part of sort of coaching and programming is not letting your 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 own biases affect how you program for others and how you program for classes because then it takes away from what uh, the client or what the what the class 
is then getting versus what they should be getting uh, but not getting because of your personal preferences on movements and those kinds of things. Obviously, like things for, for things like accessories, obviously we have preferred movements that we use, and I definitely have preferred movements that I like to use, but I will still uh, still program other things, perhaps things that I don't necessarily prefer for myself. I will still program them for clients to get that feedback on those movements, and I, that's something that I'm very, very uh, passionate about and is really getting as much feedback whether it is on specific movements whether it is on um, like specific accessories or workouts from clients to really understand whether that worked for them or whether it uh, whether it got the intended stimulus that I wanted it to get uh, for that particular client because I have a lot of clients that are on uh, are on individualized programming so they get uh, they get individualized programming specific to themselves so I have a lot of different there's a lot of people doing different things on different days so obviously if you think of uh, if you think of just one day of training I've got five and I've got uh, and you've got eight different uh, individual in individualized programs going on that's eight different workouts just for that day so that's I can't test them all but um so yeah, from that then, in order to see whether that worked and just really review whether whatever I programmed specifically worked for that client, you like really asking for feedback, asking questions, sort of whether they broke it up, how they broke it up, how the weight felt, how they felt moving through the movements, how they felt afterwards, um, whether it is on accessories, whether they felt it in the right place, whether they felt as though the right area was being worked, whether they felt as though it would have carryover, those kinds of things, asking all those questions and really trying to learn as much as possible from the client that does the workout and getting their feedback is uh, a big, big part for me. And I really do that. I really do enjoy that part of it because it really helps me like literally on a daily basis, literally on a daily basis, learn more about programming and learn more about why workouts why certain movements uh, help why certain movements perhaps don't help quite so much why why certain workouts gave that effect why perhaps a workout didn't uh, and all of that thing and it's just expanding that knowledge on a daily basis is something that I'm very hugely passionate about and something that I've become a whole lot better at more recently and it definitely takes practice programming is an art programming absolutely is an art and there's a lot that goes into it there's a lot of thought that goes behind it there's a huge 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 amount of knowledge out there and picking the right stuff and the right stuff to implement and test out uh, is is of great importance and testing the workouts and then getting that feedback from the clients themselves is uh, a, for me a big big part of that learning curve and of learning as much as I can along uh, alongside actually coaching the client and giving them what they need uh, to improve and what they want and uh, all of that stuff so yeah that's something I might become a whole 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 heap better at more recently is not letting my own preferences in terms of movement or in terms of equipment affect how I program for clients or how I program for classes so that basically covers that bit. Final part of the podcast. Talk a little bit about uh, some my latest audiobook listens. I've got sort of three, two that I've listened to recently completed, and then one that I'm currently listening to. I'll talk about uh, sort of what I've learned and why uh, why I listen, what I've learned from them, things that I've implemented, and then I've got written down here why I've been listening to those types of books. So the f two books that I have been listening to, uh, very business focused, very. Um, What's the right word? Sort of like um, very, for the most part, business-focused books, um, audiobooks. So first one is Oversubscribed. It's called Oversubscribed. And the second one is Key Person of Influence, both by Daniel Priestley. And they're very business-focused books. The first one is talked all about sort of a, a type of business model to use in terms of... Um, having more customers than you can work with more customers than you uh, are able to work with and running the business around that sort of uh, ideology or that sort of idea and then the key person of influence talks a lot about uh, how to sort of what's the best way to describe it um, sort of how to set yourself up as a key person of influence in a sector or in a niche or that kind of thing and it's 
super super interesting both really really good books they're really really good uh good listens i listen to them on uh um audible really good audio books uh and in both some really really good actionable steps that i took away straight away and that's something that i found to be some of the best books uh you can listen and then you can go away after listening to it and implement things straight away there are actionable steps that you can take away from listening and really implement and move things forward in the right direction so these two books were highly uh definitely up there in terms of actionable steps to take away so yeah um i learned a whole lot listening to both of them um obviously some of it you you tend to know and some of you know but listening to it and you get a little bit more in depth and you while you're listening to it you can think and make notes and you just get a lot more from it than just knowing what is being said so yeah just it's straight away stuff that as i've implemented straight away from listening to oversubscribed and key personal influence is and something that you can visibly see from what we're doing on the fortnum training page and on on the fortnum training instagram and on my own page as well is having wider and deeper content plans something that i've probably not done uh previously or not probably perhaps not done enough of previously is have a really in-depth and uh, sort of wider reaching plan for the content that i'm putting together and putting out but now after listening to both of those really sort of set things out really set things out in terms of in in a way that's going to really hopefully bring some real value on both uh, sort of my Instagram page in terms of full posts and then also in terms of the Fortnum training page putting a lot of work into that content plan um, and really planning things out and getting things scheduled in advance and really bringing some content that is going to be of real value and something that you can take away take a lot from I certainly hope that you can take a lot from it so that's like something that I really sort of took away from both of those audiobooks was really setting out a content plan and building out the content plan so that you have a long-term idea of where you want to go and building a plan that means you never run out of new stuff to post of fresh stuff to post of valuable stuff to post so i think that's something that can get lost in uh when posting on instagram is just posting for the sake of posting and just posting like reposting the same stuff or um yeah just reposting the same stuff because you run out of content or not posting because you run out of stuff but yeah something i've become a whole lot better at is making sure that you've always got something new to post on something fresh something that's interesting and every single time that i write a post make sure that i am writing to provide value to the people that see the post and i think that's something that i've been hugely passionate about recently and something that i think i've done very very well on my own instagram pages making sure every single post i post something that really does provide value and if you read the caption i don't know how many of you do read the captions uh in my full post but if you do read the captions there is certainly something in every single post that is uh of value and something that you can take away maybe apply to your own training maybe just a piece of knowledge that you can use maybe something that just sits in the back of your mind that might help you out or um, maybe next time you're next time you need it maybe next time you're training just something a little bit little maybe something like a technique tip or anything like that there is what there is at least one piece of value in every single post that i put out to really sort of help uh just help as many people along the way i think that's sort of the the gist of it is just to help out as many people as i can while making posts while putting out the content while uh showing what i do in my training just sharing sort of what i do sharing my story and sharing tips that i pick up maybe something that i think maybe something that i've worked on something that i've improved something that i've used to improve a lift or improve sort of uh any energy system stuff any conditioning anything like that i really tried hard to make one thing at least one piece of sort of valuable information in every single post so yeah, this sort of set me up, set me up really well for the for my content plan in terms of Instagram on both my own page and the Fortnum training page. Uh, also, longer form on YouTube, really pushing forward with longer form on YouTube, uh, particularly the Fortnum training page. Not so much my own, not not my own channel, sorry, the Fortnum training channel. Not so much on my own channel. Uh, the vlog has sort of died off a little bit. Hopefully, bringing it back a couple of a couple of episodes here and there. But yeah, the big big plans for the Fortnum training YouTube channel. 
hopefully going to be bringing a movement series uh, very very soon. We're going to sort of pick where I'm going to pick sort of certain movements and fully explain so why it's a good movement, why we use it, why you would use it, why it has carryover to anything else, like particularly talking about accessories, um, why it's a good movement to do, sort of why we do it, and all that, all of that kind of stuff. Hopefully going to try and bring one of those like sort of once a week over the next couple of months, and the next, hopefully the first one will be going out in the next couple of weeks. So please do keep an eye out on Fordham Training YouTube channel for that. So yeah, the content plan for the YouTube channel is really stepping up and there's going to be some cool stuff coming very, very soon. So yeah, that's sort of some of the stuff that I really took away from both of those audiobooks is rather than going too deep into the sort of business stuff for now, really sort of setting out the content plan, having a clearer idea, really trying to provide value as much as possible. Um, possibly looking at uh, some sort, some form of ebook very very soon. We're maybe writing some form of ebook uh, on what on a various topics and sort of putting together sort of PDF documents, those kinds of things, people to read. Looking at those kinds of things as well. And then lastly, sort of why I've been listening to these styles of. Oh, sorry, my current book is uh, Win Friends: How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. It's got uh, I think this is a two thousand and four book so it's maybe coming up 15 years old 14 14 years old so it's a, uh, an older one less uh less modern one but yeah it's a very very well uh well read it is um something that a lot of people have read it's been well reviewed and it's a very interesting book i think i'm through to chapter three or four i think i'm like two and a half hours into the audiobook at present so I'm not too far into it at all but it's a super super interesting book uh, and one that I will certainly talk about a lot lot more once I have had a chance to finish it but yeah why am I listening to these styles of book book why I'm listening to these styles of book or audiobook is uh, generally because I tend to listen to a lot of podcasts, and that's where a lot of my learning material comes from, for the most part, is podcasts. And um, so a lot of my stuff, what I listen to, uh, is generally centered around nutrition, training, uh, sort of all linked into nutrition and training for the most part, a lot of science stuff and a lot of uh, those those kinds of things. So, And there's a lot of to be had from those podcasts, so I listen to a lot from those. And then if I find a particular topic that I really like, I'll then go and find an audio book to listen to. And I think that's a really good way to, to sort of delve deeper into that particular topic. So whether it is like, for an example, if I'm listening to a podcast and it talks starts talking a little bit about intermittent fasting, I'll then go and find an find an audio book or something that delves much much deeper into intermittent fasting than it did in that in that in that podcast. So I can really learn as much as possible about it. And I think that's something that I've done recently to really try and learn as much as I can about specific topics is keep listening to as many podcasts as I can and really taking in the information, making sure that I'm taking in the right information from the right podcasts and those kinds of things. Um, and then when I find a topic that I really do enjoy is going to find an audio book and then uh, listening to that audio book to really delve deeper into that podcast. But yeah, sort of why I've picked these sort of styles of audiobook recently is generally they're not those topics, like the kinds of topics that I've been listening to, like the key person of influence over subscribe, the win friends and so people win friends and influence people. They tend to be less covered in podcasts, the topics that aren't as as covered. So they're sort of very uh if and I've not actively not searched for those kinds of podcasts, but um they tend to be from what I tend to see, they're less covered. Those kinds of topics are less covered. So using an audiobook to really sort of build up my knowledge and sort of learn more, learn as much as I can again uh, about those kinds of things and really build my knowledge in that space is the reason that I've picked those styles of audiobook. So that is going to conclude episode number 11. Certainly hope you enjoyed this one. A little bit different to what I've done previously or a little bit different to the last couple of episodes. Uh, so we answered a couple of questions. Got a good one. Good couple, Really good. Enjoyed it. Got some audio books to listen to. Uh, those ones that I have listened to, just mention them again. First one, oversubscribed. 
the second one, Key Person of Influence, both by Daniel Priestley. Those are great books if you are into, uh, if you are a coach, if you are sort of into business, if you are running a business, those are very, very interesting books for you to listen to. The, the one I'm currently listening to is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. And that, again, I would highly recommend it so far. Super interesting book if you are interested in um sort of how people communicate and how to communicate with people uh, and those kinds of things like on those sorts of lines. So yeah, I highly, highly recommend both both of the three of those. So yeah, like I said at the start, this episode has been powered by Super 7 Coffee, super, uh, www.super7.coffee or Super 7 Coffee on Instagram. Do go and check them out. The 7 Crema, very, very nice, very, very nice tasting coffee. All, all that remains to be said is thank you very, very, very much for listening. If you are listening on iTunes and you did enjoy, please do go and leave a five-star rating. Leave us some feedback. I would really love to know what you think. If you do have any questions, please do send them my way, uh, either at Fortnum.training or at Kieran Douglas Jones on Instagram. Ask away. Send your questions in. I'll get them answered right here on the podcast. Or... Send them through via email, info at fortnumtraining.com. So please do get in touch, uh, whatever your question is. Or if you do have any feedback, please do send it my way. Thank you so much for listening. I have been Kieran Douglas-Jones, head coach at Fortum Training. I was, you will hear me on iTunes or wherever you are listening. And you will see me again on YouTube in episode 12. Thank you for listening.